Hi, it's me again in the shop. I'm uh, going to make a little video here about and, and talk a little bit about end mills and what I use to cut certain materials that I, that I machine. Um, there was a, another thing that happened the end of last week with this computer right here. I was uh, getting out of the truck and I set the, the case, you know, the, the computer case and everything on the edge of the bed of the truck and when I, I was opening the door and I was getting things out of the truck and the thing fell and, um, and it kind of hit the curb and, and it, it, um, it didn't really hit that hard and I thought, oh, you know, I hope nothing's wrong with it, but it turns out when I rebooted this thing up, it, it, the, the, it doesn't recognize the video card anymore in it. I think a connector came loose and I started to take it apart and you wouldn't believe how complicated this, these laptops are inside and, I, and so I decided, no, I'm not gonna do that right at the moment. And uh, this is a pretty old computer and, and I've been thinking about a new computer anyway and so I ordered a new computer and when I get that, I'm going to transfer the data that I need off of this computer. And uh, then I'm going to disassemble it and see if there's a uh, bad connection. I think, I think that's what the problem is. It's just a bad connection or a connector came loose or the video board itself came loose. I don't know when it hit the ground. Because now, now this, this, this um, video you see here is just the standard, I guess, on the motherboard video. And I can't even run that... that uh, big screen TV that I use to display drawings mostly is what I use that for on, with a you know a PDF file of a drawing because the the um, HDMI connection to the computer doesn't work now either I think that's all tied to the video um, board I guess I don't know yet so I've ordered a, another alien this this alienware computer I like it it works good and it's it's this computer though is is pretty old. It, it's um probably a good ten years old. It still runs all right, but I can't I can't even run my CAD software now because it needs the video board to run. The oddly enough, the CAM software still works, but it's all distorted and squashed. I don't know if you can tell by looking at this screen, but everything's kind of squashed this way because the I set it to the highest resolution of the standard graphics, but it, it's distorted now. And so the new, new computer should come in next week and I can transfer the data and get everything going. The new one is the newest Alienware with the i9 processor and it's really a powerful computer. And, and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try to reinstall the softwares that I use if I don't have trouble with that, but I've not maintained my maintenance agreements on those because they're so expensive. And uh, I'm a little bit um, worried that I can't get them reinstalled and get, get uh, assistance from the people that sell that stuff if I need it, for the, uh, particularly for the Esprit software. It needs a dongle in a USB port to run, but it, um, I don't have the latest version and I've got some DVDs that have it on there and, and uh, but I think I upgraded over the internet to newer versions before I stopped paying for my maintenance agreement and so I'm, I'm like I don't know if what's gonna happen with that I'm a little bit concerned with that but I've been studying on this um, this AutoCAD Fusion 360 software and I actually think that software is better than this is free software that I currently use it looks like it's easier to use and you can um, draw and model in the same software package and everything. So what I'm planning to do is I'm going to buy a copy of that. For me, I have to pay the $450, which is like nothing compared to what I've spent on this other software. And, and I'm going to start using that and um, see how it works. If I can get a post processors to run my... I'm not too worried about the horizontal because I can cobble up something to run that, it's just a four axis horizontal mill. But the, the Integrex here, I need to maybe get with some people. I've talked to the AutoCAD people and, and uh, they say that this is possible, but I just get, need to get someone probably to um, make a more of a dedicated post processor for me if there's not one that already exists. They don't see, Auto, apparently Autodesk doesn't do their own post processors. They have 
um, outside people do it that are kind of, uh, I don't know if they have a, some kind of agreements with them to do this, but they won't, and they won't even tell me who to use necessarily. I have to decide for myself. So I've, I've left a message with a few of those places. They haven't got back to me yet, but I'm going to see if I can get a, a post processor for the Integrex, and I'm going to, I think I'm going to, uh, change over to this uh, Fusion 360. I, I think it might even be better software than that Esprit software in, in a lot of respects. And it, it'll certainly do everything I need to do. You, you very seldom need full five-axis capability on machines, even if it's a five-axis machine like this Integrex is. I, I bet in the, I don't know, I've, I've owned this machine for maybe about six years now. and. Uh, I don't think there's been a dozen times I've actually used full five-axis type work on it. You just don't do that that often. Uh, and and uh, Fusion will actually do some maybe simplistic type five-axis moves, which is usually all you do anyway. And, and uh, other than that, for $450, I think it's going to do everything I, I want to do on this machine. And even more in certain respects than the Spree does. So I'm going to try. I'm going to learn how to use that and, and try it out. And if I can uh, show or demonstrate anything I learned to you guys with that, I don't know if that would be interesting or not. So I'm just going to show a little bit about these end mills and uh, the reason that I use certain end mills over other end mills. So let's get to that. I want to talk a little bit about end mills and the differences in the way they're ground and why this works better on some materials than other materials depending on what you're cutting with the tools. Now, these are pretty much standard four flute carbide end mills here. This US 22 brand and this GAR brand are, are tools I usually get just to do generic type work or maybe finish cuts in some cases. And I don't really use this type of tool to rough in exotic materials like Inconel or, or the Super Duplex or Monel or, or various things like that, or maybe even titanium, because there's a better tool than these for that. But what, what is different about this tool over another tool? Well, let me take these out of the tubes here and let's look at them and see what's different. Make sure everything's in focus here so you can see it because this is a little bit hard to see. But you'll notice on the flutes of all three of these tools, there's a primary clearance and then there's a secondary clearance. And this is ground with a cup wheel from the side and so these are, are virtually flat angles ground in the tool for the clearance angles of the tool. And, and also these are just more or less standard four flute end mills, although you can have a, as well, this is a six flute end mill here, and it's ground the same way, and it's a standard uh, even spacing. That's the way all, all four of these tools are ground. This is also a GAR um, six flute. It's a little bit of a higher helix angle than these three tools, but it's ground the same. So what is different about this or what can we use that's different, you know, than this? Or have you ever even seen anything different? Well, there is, there is a different kind of a clearance angle that can be ground on a tool. Let me get this tool. This is a, this brand of tool actually, I've had really good success with lately. I've never used it until recently. You see, that's in focus there so you can see it. The Emco brand, and I'm really happy with the way this cuts. I'm using it for a finish cut in reality on the super duplex part, but let's see what's different about this. I'm, I'm opening up the bigger tool because it'll be a little bit easier to see on this tool. This is kind of subtle in a way, but you'll notice on the clearance on the flutes. 
there is no two angles ground on this tool tool it's just a it's more of a radial relief and it starts out at a very shallow angle and it increases as it as it goes down the edge of the flute and so this leaves a much stronger cutting edge right at the cutting edge of the tool because the angle is almost like 90 degrees to the cutting action at the very beginning of the of the relief but then it increases as it goes back so so it, it forms a radius where where this kind of relief in these is is flat ground like I said earlier so this this is stronger on on the cutting edge here also this tool has if you look at it you can see the difference in widths of the flute so this has a, an uneven flute spacing which is supposed to reduce the um, harmonic vibration of the tool and that does work I and mean, it really does do that so this is a this Imco brand I've had good success with that and it's Hanita end mill I mean a Guring this is a Guring end mill here and Hanita now I've used I've used these two brands quite a bit and had really good success with them and I just recently tried this brand as well this M.A. Ford brand and all, all of these, this Imco brand and these other three brands all work good, about the same. Can't say I, I can see a dramatic difference between one over the other. But they're all ground with this similar grind. Let me take them out of the tubes and you'll see. It's um this is this is the better geometry if you're gonna use you know if you're gonna use this for cutting um more exotic type of materials. And you'll see you'll see that there's no there's no two radial clearances on any of these end mills. Now this end mill has has this more of a relief behind the flutes, but the flutes themselves are ground the same way out at the cutting edge. This Hanita end mill here actually also has a um, variable helix and pitch of the flute, of the, the teeth or cutting edges, if you will. So the spacing varies and the helix spacing or angle, I should say, varies as well on this particular tool here. But you can see all three or all four of these are ground more or less the same way with a very similar helix angle to them as well. And this is the type of tool you want when you're going to be cutting exotic metals. And the strategy you, you want to use with a tool like this, you move some of these out of the way, is to cut with a, with a more of a, um, what you might call an adaptive type of cutting strategy where you're, you're cutting with a, a deeper length of cut along the edge of the end mill and not the face of the end mill or just the tip and taking pecs going down down in Z if, if this was your Z direction here and you would take a deep depth of cut and just cut shallow cuts on the on the side of the end mill in, in uh, materials like these high nickel content materials or or even this super duplex like I'm machining now the, the, the end mill holds up better if you take a shallow depth of cut along the side and, and just keep repeating that cut and just taking little um, pecks at it, if you will. This is a much better cutting strategy. It takes a little bit more time, but it, uh, it, the tool holds up better with that kind of cutting strategy. Also, I've noticed that these cutting edges on these tools are much smoother. You can't feel any, any uh, if you run your fingernail across maybe a more um, a tool ground this way or a more economically ground tool I'll put it or you know a less expensive tool. I guess this, this is partially what you're paying for when you're buying expensive end mills and they, they feed faster down these flutes with the end mill, I mean with the grinding wheel and uh, you can actually feel it if you run your fingernail across there and you feel that's a little bit rougher feeling than 
then this feels this feels absolutely smooth on this particular tool. The um, during end mill is just a little bit rougher, but this is this must have been even polished maybe on the cutting edges before it was coated. Also, all of these tools have a TIALN coating on them, which seems to be the the coating of choice for this kind of work. They're, all of them are coated with the same coating. So I thought I'd show that just a little bit difference. This this isn't something that is necessarily pointed out in the catalog about how they grind these clearance angles. Now they might specify you know variable helix or variable pitch end mills for exotic materials, but but they I, I have yet to see a catalog that actually specifies a radial relief radial relief grind instead of just a, a, a flat grind on a standard end mill like this has. I thought that might be interesting to show.